After our organization creates our FastField account, we receive a registration email with a link to confirm our account. We are then routed to a page where we can create our password and log in. This leads us to download and install the FastField app from the App Store on iOS or the Play Store on Android. Upon installing and opening the FastField app, we are prompted with a login to our FastField account. The first thing we see is the main menu. Form Libraries will take us to all the libraries and forms we are allowed to view and submit. Inbox is where we can open forms that have been dispatched to us. In Progress is where forms which have not yet been submitted are stored, such as if we need to step away for lunch, or if the battery on our device suddenly dies. Sync is where submitted forms are stored if our device is offline or does not have an internet connection. Finally, Submitted will take us to see copies of the data we previously submitted. Let's take a quick look at a form through the libraries. First, we pick the desired library. In this case, the company forms library, and then the form itself. In this case, we select the daily spray report form. We confirm that we want to start the form and are presented with a full list of fields. Most fields are rather intuitive, allowing us to freely write or dictate text, or presenting a list of options to choose from. After the first time we use the form, any time afterward, it will automatically fill many fields with the last entries we used. For now, we'll fill in the easier fields and look at a couple that may require additional care. The week ending field is not a memory field meaning it will not remember your last submission, and will need to be entered with each new use of the form. Selecting certain options may show or hide other fields in the form, such as this question regarding proximity to U.S. waters. A unique field of importance is the Geodata field, which allows us to select a location on a map. The Chemical Information section is an example of a subform, which helps organize data. Subforms like this one can allow fields to repeat, such as when we move to a different location on the same day, or change chemical mixes or application type. First, we add the date and time from the chemical application. Next, we add the line name and location. Under the Type of Treatment field, we can choose the type of treatment, such as High Volume Foyer. From there, we continue to select the number of products in our tank mix. We can have as many as 8 products in each mix. Before specifying the substances in our mix, we choose how the mix is measured by either 100 gallons, acre, or percentage. Next, we can proceed to the products themselves. The products we see here are also memory fields. So if our last mix was similar to the one we are about to use, it takes less time to complete. When we choose the product, the EPA number automatically appears below. We then enter the amount of that product we use in the mix, and can move on to the next product, and the next, and so on until complete. At the bottom of the subform, we can see a summary of the complete mix. If the drum we're using has a barcode that tells us the chemical information and the lot number, we can scan it here. Next, we can select the weather, temperature, and wind speed and direction. If we need to report the weather multiple times, we can choose the option to add more conditions. Species presents us with a multi-select list, where we can choose as many types of trees and other plants as necessary. Below the species, we enter the average plant height and density. Next, we enter the length and width of the area for the application site, and the total square footage and acreage are automatically calculated. Last, we enter the total amount of mix used on the site. Once we've finished this application site, we can simply tap Add New in the bottom right corner to add an additional chemical treatment. Once we've finished adding our chemical treatments, we can tap the arrow in the upper left to navigate back up to the main form. If we need to add more later, we can always come back before submitting the form. 
We can see, a few fields below the subform, that the day's total mix, spray area, and gallon per acre is calculated and displayed. This form also has the option to add photos with comments. Photos can be taken on the spot or selected from the device library. Tapping Done will bring us back to the master form. Here, we see two important options in the bottom left, Index and Verify. Index displays all pages and sections of the form. This form only has one page and one section. Verify displays any validation errors, in other words, any required fields that haven't been completed, such as this I have read and understood labels field. We will not be able to submit the form until all required fields are complete. When data collection is complete, we submit the form by tapping the Submit button in the upper right corner, and a report is sent to our email as a non-editable Word document. The data you record in the fast field form will be reported in the sections of the document as shown. Your form will be automatically emailed to you, and you can also enter additional email addresses as necessary. For more information on getting started with Fast Field Forms, contact Kobe Kutchall or Todd Hagenbuth.